everyone. As we all know, the pandemic has wrought havoc on the cruise industry, and many cruise ships have now gone to the scrapyard, and one of the saddest losses is the Marco Polo. This 55-year-old cruise ship was a survivor from an earlier era, an era where ships had curves, where their superstructures weren't cluttered with balconies. And even now, as it sits on the beach with its hull completely exposed, you can still see those classic fine lines. But as it's about to meet the cutter's torch, and we grieve for the end of an era, we can take solace in the fact that there are a few books out there that have preserved the memory of this ship, and indeed, vessels of that era. Ferry Publications has produced a book celebrating the ship's 50th year back in 2014. And thankfully for us, this book is a worthy record of this ship's life. Marco Polo began its long career as the second ship of the five-ship Russian poet class. So, in order, they were the Ivan Franco, the Alexander Pushkin, Shota Rustavali, Taras Chevchenko, and the Mikhail Lermontov. The Lermontov unfortunately sank in New Zealand in 1986, and I will feature that in a future review, as the sinking remains controversial to this day. The other three ships were all scrapped in the early 2000s, with the Ivan Franco going first in 1997. The second ship of the class, the Alexander Pushkin, would be reborn as the cruise ship Marco Polo and was completely rebuilt in the early 90s. And it was this reconstruction that essentially secured the ship's career for the next three decades. As the Marco Polo, it cruised with various companies before finally having a long career with cruise and maritime voyages. And sadly, CMV Cruises was also one of the casualties of the pandemic. Now, this book covers the entire ship's career, from its days as a Soviet ocean liner and cruise ship. And as always with ferry publications, these books are lavishly illustrated, always printed on high-quality paper, and published to the very highest standards. As the Soviet Alexander Pushkin and its other sisters, they travelled far and wide, and in Australia they were very well known as they were operating under the banner of CTC Cruises and ran many budget cruises at that time. This book covers the entire career of the ship, and once it was owned by Cruise and Maritime Voyages, the ship was essentially modernized, but done with just enough to keep the sense of the classic era alive within the ship. And that was the whole niche of CMV cruisers, still providing a classic experience with ships that had modern, amen modern amenities, such as bathrooms in the cabins and fantastic food and service, but ships that were small, intimate, and retained that old-world charm and elegance. This book, now that the ship is about to be gone, could do with another edition, so that the unfortunate final years and its untimely demise are documented. But for those who wish to hold on to the memory of this ship, this is a fantastic account. As I've said, the life of the ship is well covered, and there are many photos that show the ship as it was with its time as the Marco Polo. And let's see if we can find some more shots. And you even have shots within the engines. So, at least we actually have something to document and hold on to the life of this ship. And one other one to also point out, and a slightly more recent one, is this one, which was originally written to be distributed on board the CMV fleet 
and celebrates the first decade of CMV Cruises. Reading this book now, it, it, it's so sad because not only is the company gone, but pretty much half their fleet is now going to get scrapped. This book, as well as an account of the company itself, its fleet, um, but I do warn you that a third of the book, though, is composed of just itineraries, which, in retrospect, tends to be a waste of space. But the inside knowledge of how this company operated, the thoughts of leading crew members, and the photo tours of all the fleet, including the Marco Polo, and the Asta, which is also now being scrapped, from a historical perspective, are... Uh, fantastic. And it's a worthy tribute. Yeah. As ships pass away from physical to the memorial, all we have are the books and the memories and the photos of those who lived and served on them. And as the Marco Polo slips away and becomes part of history, we at least have something to record the memory. And hopefully within the next few years, there'll be more books. There is yet to be a definitive history of the Russian poet class. And certainly, this ship played a large part in securing the legacy of those ships. Hopefully the pandemic will be over soon, cruising can restart as normal, and hopefully some of the Few remaining classic cruise ships can hold on for just a few more years to serve that very faithful clientele and to provide variety. As great as the big balconied ships are, it's always refreshing to see a smaller ship with a bit of a shear sail through to remind everyone of an earlier time of marine architecture and just that touch of old style elegance. Anyway, Please let me know if there are any other books about classic cruise ships or ocean liners you'd like me to review, and I will happily add them to my list, because as you can see, there's plenty here. And as always, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy, and happy reading.